guys, my name is Eza and welcome back to my channel. So for this video, I'm going to be talking about my book review for Mental by Shaz Johar by the publishers Buku Fixie. So let's start off with the plot and the premise of the story. So the premise of the story is that this book talks about Maya, a maid who works and lives with Tuan Jin and his family, Puan Sierra, as well as his two kids, Rashid and Rania. So in her mind, everybody in this household has issues. Tuan Sierra has, um, what do you call it, is having an affair. Tuan Sierra? No, Tuan Jin is having an affair. Puan Sierra is, have, is suffering from an unknown illness. Rashid is suffering from BIID, which is Body Integrity Identity Disorder. And Rania wants to be a Christian because she loves singing in church, apparently. And after she has that whole shit to deal with, she suddenly starts hearing this name Rauda all the time from her neighbors to Point Sierra to Tuan Jin, this Rauda girl. And she starts to be like, who is this girl? What does that have to do with me? What's going on? So basically, that is the whole premise of the plot. And I will go into my rating of this whole book. And my rating is 1 over 5. Completely hated it. Do not recommend. So let's get into the book review. I think I'll like split this book review to like four parts. Not like for videos, but you know, for, for sections, I guess, of what I want to discuss. Which I think is not going to be efficient because, I don't know, my I'm having a brain fart. And it's, uh, I don't think this review is going to be good. But yes, I'm just really going to try. If you guys understand, that's great. So I'm going to split it to plot, characters, writing, and I guess overall. Um, in terms of plot, I do not like the plot. I genuinely do feel that... The plot went everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Um, I know it's a paradox. Is it a paradox? Or it just... I can't remember the word. But it just... Like, it doesn't make sense, basically. And the reason why I say it goes everywhere but nowhere at the same time is because some plot points just get repeated again and again and it just goes on and on and on. And it goes on a bit too long that you kind of think like, okay, just... Just, just move on. Just, just get on with the whole book, you know? Just move on already. Stop, stop dilly-dallying with this one plot point that goes absolutely nowhere and doesn't add any depth or nuance to the overall book. So you start to question of like, why is this plot here? And even if it's there, why is it extended to the length that it was in the book? And my example for this is the whole Rashid blackmailing Maya. And the reason why he's blackmailing Maya is because he needs help to chop off his right arm off. Because again, he's suffering from BIID. He can't do it himself, at least not efficiently. So he needs help. And he enlists the help of Maya. At first, Maya is like, no, I don't want to do this crazy shit. But apparently, he has dirt on her and he's blackmailing her. And the dirt that he has on her are lewd and nude pictures of Maya and Tuan Jin having sex because the person that Tuan Jin is having an affair with is actually his own maid, Maya. So she's just like, shit, I don't have a choice. I gotta do this, but I don't want to. And so that plot point gets extended for a really, really long time for like two, three chapters. I, I, might, I might be wrong, but it sure felt that way. It just extended again and again and again and I just don't understand why it's included because you could have just condensed that aspect of the plot and and focus more on important things in the book you know for example the, the character dynamics between each other the relationships with each other give more depth make make me like the book you know make me like Maya give her more exposition who is she how is she? What does she do? Who is she as a person? You get what I mean? So I feel like th that plot point could be condensed more so we could focus more on important things. And another thing that I did not like about this book was all that, I guess, shock factor that apparently Buku Fixie really likes to include. I just don't understand the incessant sex scenes. I'm not a prude, okay? I must tell you I'm not a prude, again. I really love historical romance and I really got good erotica. BDSM, whatever. Like, 
if it's written well, I like it. So, and the reason why I don't like all these incessant sex scenes is because number one, it's not sexy. Number two, it's not sensual. It just, when I read it, it just reads to be really crass, crude, and just, I'm sorry to say, disgusting. It's just not cute, you know? Like, why are you putting all these sex scenes just to like, for shock value? Maybe one, one entry is fine to put it that way, you know? Maybe the second entry make it seem really romantic, really sensual, right? And it's like, you put all these sex scenes in this book, right? And what's the point? What does it add to the book? Aside from just trying to shock your readers, which by the way, isn't shocking. And if it does shock the readers, honestly, ugh, come on, man. Sex is normal for human beings. Why are you still shocked by it? I'm just, ugh. Just annoys me because like, I don't understand if you're putting so much emphasis on sex to really sell your book then I don't think you're a good writer I'm sorry to say if you're if you're relying on too much of one thing to sell your book to like shock them and I mean to shock your readers it's like no just no okay so yeah I just don't understand the sex scenes. It just goes on and on and on and on. It's like constantly. And I feel like just try to make it sensual, you know, make it cute, make, make it have a difference. But yeah, it went on forever and ever and ever and it goes absolutely nowhere. Like why do you need to put all these sex scenes if it's just not going to do anything to the plot? I don't understand. The first few entries is fine. But if like h half of the book is just that shit, cut it out, cut it out, edit it out, you know? Okay, next one. What do I have here? Okay, I already talked about the sex thing. And then, um, okay, now I'm going to talk about the plot inconsistencies. Not really inconsistencies. I just feel like there's too many plot threads that were not developed properly and were not explained thoroughly. So it just makes me feel like, okay, you give me this plot point, but what was the point of you putting it in if you're not going to explain it to me or give me some sort of like satisfying ending is what is in my mind. So the first plot threads that I feel kind of like, okay, what was the satisfying ending? What, what was the point of you putting it in? Is number one. Okay, I already talked about it. Why were there so many sex points? Sex plot points, by the way. Number two is... Okay, okay, this one, number two. Spoilers. If Maya is Rauda, right? And Rauda is Tuan Jin's second wife, then why did Tuan Jin act really guilty when he brings Maya for a holiday? Uh, when they found out that ben Benjamin, the neighbor, was stalking them. Like, why? Why was he guilty? I mean, like, he's bringing his second wife on a holiday. She doesn't know it's his. she is the second wife because she thinks she's a maid due to her head injury because of an accident that, that she was involved in, which I'm going to, you know, will I talk about it? But basically, yes. Why did Tuan Jin feel so guilty or like act so guilty? He literally left her at the side of a bus stop somewhere and told her like, okay, you can find your, your way back home, right? You like, just do whatever. And he just gave her like 200 ringgit. So I'm just thinking like, okay, if she is your second wife, why are you acting like you guys are in an affair and you don't want your first wife or your wife to find out? But then we find out at the end of the book that Rhonda is his second wife. So that makes no sense. Why would you feel guilty for bringing your second wife on a holiday? Because you're scared that your first wife would find out. What? That makes no sense. Unless, unless that he got married to Rauda without Puan Sierra find, like, knowing, then that's fine. But Puan Sierra knows Rauda, or Maya in this case, is the second wife. They live in the same house. So tell me, why is he acting like a scared little shit, right? When Benjamin, like what do you call, stalked them. And number three, why is Benjamin stalking them? To explain to me why Benjamin 
is so in love with Ralva, right? It is never explained in the book why he was so in love with her, why he's so obsessed with her. I just don't understand. Is she so goddamn hot? Okay, I understand that Tuan Jin married Ralva because he wants kids, his wife can't give him kids, and he basically wants a surrogate mother, right? So that is his whole plan with Rauda and why he is obsessed with her. I get that part. What I don't get is why why Benjamin is obsessed with Rauda. Suddenly he's just kind of like telling Rauda when she still thinks she's Maya. It's kind of like, hey, you seem really lonely. Like, what's up? And he starts to befriend her. And awal awal udah oh keluar dah suara aku. At the start and at the start of the book, he's already kind of like, I really love you, Maya. Like, I'm so in love with you. I anything you want, I'll give it to you. And I'm just kind of like, wait, what? Who? Huh? What? Like what? Ugh. I just don't understand. Number three, what was the point of the author putting in that? What's his name again? Benjamin really loves going to church. I don't fucking get it. Like, is he trying to show that Benjamin is a really good Christian? Like, he's a really religious Christian? And how does that play into the plot? Because it fucking doesn't, okay? It fucking doesn't. It goes fucking nowhere, that plot. That plot point. Like, him going to church all the goddamn time, it goes nowhere. Like, what was the point of showing it to me that he goes to church all the damn time, okay? I'm getting heated. I'm getting heated. Okay, let me explain to you. He says to Maya, "Hey, let's go out. Let's go out for coffee." He keeps begging her to bring her out, and he, and by the time Maya says, "Okay," the first thing he does is like, "Hey, I'm gonna just go to church first, okay? Then we go out." Like, bitch, what was the point then of you begging for her to come out with you just for you to spend like what half an hour in the goddamn church? Then to go out with her, why can't you go to church first? Then pick her up, and then you guys go out. Then you guys can spend the whole time together, and she would have a lot of fun with you, you know? Makachendol and everything. She doesn't have to, like, wait in the car, because she doesn't want to go into church, because she's a Muslim, you know? And she has her prejudice, but you get what I mean. She doesn't want to go into church. Like, Chum, what, what was the point? At first, at first, I thought that, I thought that Maya was having an affair with Benjamin when she was Rauda, right? Kiganya, Rauda was having an affair with Benjamin and then they couldn't have this affair or like this relationship because Benjamin was a Christian. So I thought, okay, if that was the case, then it makes a lot, a lot of sense that the whole scene of Benjamin wanting to go to church all the damn time. So I was like, okay, that, that plays, that plays into it. I really genuinely do feel that it didn't really need to be written that way. You know what? I might just uh, condense all this plot writing thing together. But yeah, I digress. I really think that there are many other ways to show that Benjamin is a Christian. He could just be there for Maya, you know, when when she was feeling down in the dumps. Give give her like a good Bible quote or something. Or like show he has like a cross or something as a necklace. There's so many other ways. It doesn't have to explicitly be like him going to church. But then it doesn't really play into the plot. So anyways, I thought that that was the whole church thing, right? Because of the whole Christian thing. I thought that um, they're having an affair they or like a relationship, but they couldn't really pursue the relationship because she's Muslim, he's a Christian, neither of them wants to like, what do you call it, convert. So I was like, okay, I can see it. But then towards the end, we realized that Maya, uh, what do you call it, Rauda, was having an affair with... Maya, Benjamin's wife. So then I'm like, wait a minute. What was the point then of this whole Christian thing? I don't fucking get it. So yes, num plot the plot shit number four, okay? Why was suddenly, why was suddenly, what is my English? Why was Rauda suddenly a lesbian at the end? I'm not... I'm not having anything against lesbians or the LGBTQ plus community. I'm just saying there was no tips, tips, no. There was no like hints or like shit like that to kind of suggest that Ralda, I'm going to call her Ralda now and not Maya, that Ralda, who was previously Maya, or is it Maya previously Ralda? You get my point. Ralda was 
gay, basically. There was no hints, there was no foreshadowing, there was no exposition, there was fucking nothing. It was so fucking out of left field, it might have come from a goddamn different dimension, okay? I'm just kind of like, when I read that, I'm like, what? That plot twist was so fucking unsatisfying. If that book wasn't the library's book, I would have just threw it across the, threw it on the wall against the wall. I can't even English. But basically, yeah, I don't get it. Like, what? You don't. You never tell me that Rauda has been gay all this time, and you suddenly be like, oh, Rauda's gay. She's having an affair with Maya. And I'm like, what? That's. Never mind. I will continue to the next one. Okay, let's see, let's see. Okay, I talked about that. Yeah, why was she a lesbian? Talked about that. Okay, 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 okay. What was the point of Rania being, wanting to be Christian and Rashid having, like, B-I-I-D? Another spoiler, by the way. Rania and Rashid are actually the figment, up at the, what is it? Figment of imagination? Basically, they're not real. They are made up by Rauda. After she got into an accident with Maya, where Maya died, and the reason for their accident was because their relationship was found out by Maya's, um, what do you call it? Sorry, by Rauda's dad, and he was just kind of like, no shit, this ain't gonna fly, bro. This ain't gonna fly. You get, you get over this shit over. What? You get over this, this ain't gonna fly. I don't like it. Stop it. So yeah, there was some, I don't know, some car chasing going on. And then um, the car that Maya and Rada was in was in an accident. Maya died. Um, and Rada had a miscarriage because she's the surrogate mother, by the way. If I didn't say that earlier. She's the surrogate mother for Tuanjin and Ponsiera. So she had a miscarriage and then she had... A mental breakdown apparently because she cannot remember who she is she thinks she's Maya for some reason so yes back to what I was saying why did my uh, I'm getting confused why did Rada's mind make it seem like why did she think or like she conjured these characters up in her mind where Rania wants to be a Murtad and Rashid has BIID right like I I understand that when you have brain damage you cannot really control how the brain processes things and how it heals but you can get an inkling like there's always a reason there's always a reason and based from a lot of all the did videos that i watch on youtube which is dissociative identity disorder based on all the videos that i have watched on did Whenever there's a new personality or the personality that they have currently in their mind, right? There's always a reason for them to be there. Either it's to be a protector, either to be a friend, either... It's always something, you know? So I don't understand why Rada made these two characters up because there was no reason for it. There was no, there was no reasoning behind it. Why did Rania want to be... A Christian is it because Maya was a Christian but it was never explained in the book was Maya a Christian especially a religious Christian it explained that Ben was a Christian a really religious Christian so I thought okay maybe that was the point but then we realized that she was having an affair with Maya not Ben so then what was the point of Rania wanting to be Christian it makes no sense and what if and what about Rashid Right, wash it, wash it, pula. Rashid and his BIID. It was never explained like why he became like why she conjured him in her mind. Is it because she had a history of self harm, perhaps? No, it was never explained. So I'm just kind of like. So apparently she's just crazy. Okay, she's just a kook. And another point in my plot. Plot issues, by the way, is why is Dr. Salman so fucking stupid? Dr. Salman is the psychiatrist. I always get psychiatrists and psychologists wrong. But basically, he's the doctor that's handling um, 
Rashid's case and Rania's case. But then uh, apparently, the truth truth be told, he is actually the psychiatrist for Maya, a.k.a. Rauta. Even I'm getting confused. I'm really sorry. But yeah, he's the guy, he's the doctor that's settling her case. And Tuan Jin is hiring him because he wants his Rauta back. And then he's just kind of like, yeah, I got you, bro. I can totally make her remember shit. So anyways, she's in this asylum, not really asylum, but basically like he, she's in the hospital and then he kind of like tries to trigger her memory back and then um, she kind of says the right things because Ben and her parents are like, just play along with what Tuan Jin wants and you can finally get out of here. So she does play along with it. She's When he asks her about her past, she kind of says that, oh, usually she calls Tuan Jin Tuan Jin, but now she calls him Abang Jin and she's just kind of like pretending to be Rauda without not really knowing or remembering who Rauda was and how she was, you know, how she is, I guess. So, yeah, and then he's just kind of like, she, like, Rauda just plays along for a bit and then Dr. Salman is just kind of like, oh, welcome back, Rauda. We're so happy to get you back. I can't believe, like, you finally remember who you are. And I'm just kind of, I'm just here like, wait, what? You're not going to do any other tests on her? Brain test, I don't know, CT scan or whatever those doctors do. Like, you, you're not going to have additional tests on her to really ascertain that she is Rada and not Maya anymore. You're just gonna believe it. That what you call you're just gonna believe like oh she says she's Rada. Like where did you get your doctor's cert, man? Because if this is really easy to fool you, I wanna get that doctor's cert. It really helps me in my job seeking adventures or end of endeavors. Yeah. I'm just kinda like, man, this guy's stupid. And then, so he's just kind of like, okay, let me, you know, let me send you back to Tuan Jin. And then she's just kind of like, oh yeah, sure, I'm, yeah, cool, I'm really excited. And then, you know, she escapes because she says she needs to pee. And he's just kind of like, okay, fine, you need to pee. He doesn't follow her to the toilet. I mean, yeah, it's sexual harassment if he does, but, you know, seems kind of stupid in my opinion. Like, you, you don't watch cop shows, is it? This is how they fool you all the time. And you're supposed to be the doctor. So, yeah. Let me see. What other things that I have here that I don't like? Okay, I already talked that. Also, who the heck is Yanti? Yanti, according to Benjamin, is like this hoe of a maid who kept having affairs with everybody in the neighborhood. And then she just disappeared. Apparently, Ben says he went, she went back to, I think Sabah or Kuching or whatever. And then she just went back to her place and just kind of not continued to work in KL. But I'm just kind of like, what was the point of you putting that in if you're not going to tell me? Like, what was, basically, what was the significance of this Yanti story? Tell me, what was the significance of it? No significance. If it's no, not significant, why did you put it in? Okay? Why did you put it in? Okay, wait, I need to find my charger, so. Okay, back again, my phone is dying. So, another thing that I have an issue with, I'm not sure if I should categorize this in writing or plot, but basically what I didn't like was, I didn't know if Maya, aka Rauda, was really into this whole affair with Tuan Jin, is because she says they're having an affair, but it seems like she, she wasn't a willing participant, you know? It's kind of like every time they have these sex stuff or like whenever they're having sex, it's just kind of like it has the insinuation that she has to do it, you know? And if you're having to do something which kind of makes it seem like it's against your will, is it really an affair or is it just abuse of power? So it just makes me wonder like what was the author really trying to go here? The, like Because it doesn't seem... He, he isn't really explicitly saying that Maya is into this relationship or not really into the relationship. So it just makes me wonder, what does Maya want exactly? Are you into this relationship or not? Are you being coerced or abused or not? 
you know it's just kind of like some parts she's just kind of like oh i have to do this you know how i'm always weak when he begs like that and i'm just kind of okay maybe she likes duan jin and if she does have romantic feelings for him why wasn't it shown in the book more exactly right why wasn't it shown more that she has feelings for him she does care about him and uh, in other terms other than just sex but then it's not really shown but also if it's not really she's not really into the romantic aspect of the affair then i thought okay perhaps she's more of a sugar baby you know it's more of a uh what do you call it a sexual thing but it doesn't really say that either it doesn't explicitly say that she gets monetary gain from their relationship like at least say that oh like Tuan Jin gets me a new phone or like buys me Burberry or like Louis Vuitton or like buys me sushi all the damn time you know something like that then you start to see okay she's into this affair because she has to do it for monetary gain a girl's got to hustle you know I get it I get the hustle I've never hustled that way but I understand you, you got to do what you got to do man so i'm just kind of like it wasn't explained so then i'm like wait why is she in this affair right if she's not really willing to be in the affair but she's not really not willing so what is she so yeah i was confused about that in terms of writing per se to be quite honest with you i don't really have much of a problem with the writing or all these plot stuff writing too i'm getting confused but i mean like i finished the book so the writing did hook me in i mean like i hate read it but i still finished it considering again but better i just cannot with this book i literally dnf'd it with five chapters left i just could not handle the book so writing i don't really have much of a problem it was it was kind of a, it was okay i still prefer nadia khan's writing but i mean Shaz Johar is okay, writing wise. Um, in terms of characters, let me talk about. It. Let me tell you what I feel again. Okay, I mean, like, this video is gonna be forever to take to edit. I mean, like, I think it's almost like thirty minutes long. But yeah, in terms of characters, I do not like any of the characters. I cannot empathize with any of them. I hate all of them. By all means, they could all die and rot in hell, and I couldn't give a shit. Especially Maya, aka Ralda. Like Ralda, she's the most passive character I have ever seen in my life. Okay, that's a lie, but you get what I mean. I mean, like everything happens to her. Nothing that happens to her is from her own accord. Like she doesn't. She isn't proactive in her life, you know, with the whole affair thing. Not proactive. Being blackmailed. Not proactive. And then with the whole Benjamin thing, not proactive. What else isn't she proactive with? With the whole Rauda thing, right? Because Ben is like, do you know who Rauda is? Why don't you ask to one Jin? She never does ask. People tell her who Rauda is and eventually she finds out Rauda is herself. And I'm just kind of like, everything happens to her. Nothing happens because of her. And you know how boring that is to read or watch? It's really boring because who wants to read a freaking passive character? Everything happens to her. Like, then what's the point? I hate a passive character. And all the other characters, they're completely... You can't empathize with them. They're all shit. Benjamin's cheating on his wife and is obsessed with Radha for no reason. And then it's like he doesn't want Maya to be with her because he's going all the mentality of if I can't have her, nobody can. I don't know what's up with Tuan Jin. He's obsessed with her too. Tuan Sierra, she, I get why she hates Ralda. I mean, I would hate her too. But nobody, nobody, no character in this book is worth the time. And I can't empathize with any of them. I can't relate with any of them. So, hate it. Overall, I do not recommend this book. Don't read it. I really... I can't. It's not a good book. But I'm thinking, should I read the new book by Shaz Johar? Just for more of a comparison. Just to see kind of like, has he improved in his writing, in his plot structure, yada, yada, yada. I'm, I'm really interested to read his new book. Can't remember the name. But maybe I'll read it on ebook because um, Bookofixie on Google Play is pretty cheap. 
so I might read it there. I might buy it, but let's just see how I feel. Oh, basically that's it overall. I'm gonna have another like video, by the way, where I discuss my true feelings over Buku Fixie and the problems I have with it. So keep your eyes tuned for that, and that is my review. Sorry, it's all over the place. I really did try to make sense. I hope I did make sense. If not, um, I guess just read my blog. I think I make more sense there. Yep, that's it for this video. Bye.